We're, we've got 1.7 acres of lease land that we lease from Bishop Museum. You know, our concern is what's going to happen now? Who's, you know, who's going to come in? Um, are they going to offer it directly to us? You know, to be, um, you know, offered first to uh, the the leasees. You know, do we want to purchase it? Um, is it going to be put in a trust? Is it, you, you, there's so many questions, you know, that we're just not sure about. It's not that we didn't know that this was coming. There had been talk about it happening. Um, the method in which they announced it kind of was a little um, surprising to us as we didn't know ahead of time that they were going to go on the news and make the announcement. So it was a little um, shocking for us to hear it, you know, and um, not that we weren't, we didn't know it was coming, it's just we didn't know it was coming then. They've talked to us about it, they've mentioned that, you know, they are, um, you know, that they're not very good stewards of the land, they admit to that, you know, that they want to find somebody that'll be even better steward of the land and, and take care of it and help to preserve and perpetuate the culture that is down in Waipio, which is taro far basically taro farming. Um, I think, you know, just with their announcement alone, there's been huge public outcry, you know, um, even with people that have, not necessarily don't have ties to the valley, but are like, whoa, wait a minute, you can't sell YPO. You know, YPO is not for sale, you know. Um, so th there's been a lot of public outcry, and I honestly feel that we have enough support from just not just our legislators, our council people, you know, from the government agencies. I think that we have enough support that we'll be able to work something out that is to the benefit of not just us as leases, but also more importantly to YPO Valley, you know, to preserve its, its essence, its spirit, its culture. I think the biggest thing that, that we want to see as leases is um, consistency, maybe not so much more support, but we, we want to see more of the land being used. There's a lot of land that is not um, being actively farmed. So, you know, having more farmers down here, having more of the land open up for farming, having, um, just having more communication, you know. Um, of course, ultimately, we'd love more control over the amount of traffic that we have coming in and out of the valley. You know, that, that would be amazing. We are part of all of the different, all you know, different stakeholders. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's good to see all of them working together and um, just coming together as one, you know, and being able to work together as an alliance. Ha'ola OIPO came into play when um, Senate Bill 3063, I believe that was the number, um, proposed by Malama Solomon and um, Kahele, I think, was the other senator. And so the, um, the community came together and formed Ha'ola OIPO. And in the efforts to do that, you know, was to, to make a stand and say, hey, we are YPO, and this is, this is what we want. This is what we're looking for. Um, there was also the um, YPO Valley Circle, which initiated and started the YPO Valley Information Education Officer Program. And then there was the YPO um, Taro Farmers Association. And so now, with the three different groups, um, you know, Bishop Museum came in and said, hey, can we talk to one group? And so it's great, and you know, even with Val Poindexter, you know, um, coming in and saying, "Hey, let's all form an alliance, come together as one group, and you know, it'll be much easier." So it has happened, and it's been so much smoother and so much better.